So today I want to talk a little bit about the problem with having a niche. And I know this is a big thing for those of you who are basically into entrepreneurship uh, or who've read books like Blue Ocean Strategy, or I know Gary Vaynerchuk is a big uh, person who talks about this, about finding your niche. How now with the internet, you have uh, so many possible clients out there that you should try to niche yourself as much as possible. And if you're into something really esoteric or really kind of specific, then that's fine because you still find enough people to do business with. Like if you're really into Smurfs, then sure, go right into Smurfs and be the best Smurf provider, blogger, video maker, whatever that you can find. And so I just wanted to kind of recommend not doing this. Um, and the issue I, I have with it is that I see so many people, I mean, you know, a lot of people you talk to are just saying niche the, the, you know, the most you can and try to, uh, and you know, if you're into say graphic design, be a graphic designer just for people who, I don't know, are in the, uh, are in the, some industry, in the legal industry, but you know, niche it even more, only people in the, um, legal industry in a certain city, but even more, only people in the legal industry that are defending small businesses that are in a certain city or something and you keep doing it more and more and more which is fine i mean maybe not the certain city because that definitely limits it but everything else you could say well i have access to everyone on the internet so who cares i could be a graphic designer for people who in law firms that only defend pets and that's a great niche because no one else is in it and so i can go full steam ahead the problem with that that at least i've found is that many times you're you're there kind of lost you make a website you make a social media thing and all that and then you're like, okay, now why aren't people coming to me? I built it and they're, they're not coming. And that's not the way it works on the internet. It's not if you build it, they'll come because they, they won't. They won't find you. They don't know where to find you. And if you're just there on the internet kind of doing your thing, there are too many other people out there on the internet doing their own thing and no one's going to find you. So I don't, uh, niching can be very good, but my recommendation at least would be to try to go broader at first because that way you can benchmark if you want to be a graphic designer first of all just be a general graphic designer because right away you can see all the other most successful graphic designers and see what they've been doing and just google them just search on the graphic design websites whatever it might be 99 designs something like that whatever it might be and see what they do and then say okay uh you know i like what this person does that person does that person does and you incorporate all of that and then you have a good pitch you know, and then you see how that works out. And maybe at that point you can see if you want, I would, I would recommend trying to make that work out for a bit and then niche down a bit and say, okay, now I target, target law firms. And then you can see what other graphic designers target law firms and what kind of designs they have for law firms and, and what goes there. And you can benchmark and then you can go and try to, you know, establish more of a niche or niche niche, I think. And then you can try to figure that out. But if you're going to niche it right away, it's just, you know, it, it's just too small of a market and you're one spec there and there are a couple little other specs of people who need your services, but there's no way for you guys to find each other because they don't know that you even exist and you don't know where they are, what they're doing, or even if they're even advertising what they, you know, what they need or what they want. So anyway, niching can be good. Follow that blue ocean strategy or whatever it might be to find your own niche. That's great. But Start large, maybe, and then later on niche a bit, at least once you get the, the hang of it, because there are many things you're going to have to get the hang of when you start off. You're not going to have all the answers right away. In fact, you're going to make plenty of mistakes. And it's best to have other people to emulate, other people to copy, other people, I mean, not to copy per se, but yeah, to get an example. Everyone I know has had, you know, has done that, at least, you know, seen how other people do it and then try to make it better. And by the way, this isn't just freelancers, entrepreneurs, or, you know, people freelancing like us. I mean, Facebook wasn't the first one to do what they do. Walmart wasn't the first big box store. McDonald's wasn't the first burger. And, you know, all these people kind of took what was there and then benchmarked and kind of, you know, built on that. And I think it's important to be able to do that no matter what business you're in. And if you start too narrow, you won't be able to do that because you don't know who else to look at. If you're, you know, if, if, uh, if all you're doing is you're providing text for people who write you know, Smurfs fan fiction, I don't know, whatever it might be, then you, you don't have anyone else to copy. You don't know how to go about it or what to do and stuff like that. So anyway, try to go large, see what you can learn from that and apply what you learn 
in the broader market into your niches and then that should be more successful at least from what i've seen that is more successful because then you already have some knowledge and you can apply it to that specific niche where once again bring that knowledge to that small narrow part where you don't have many you don't have much competition and then you can really do something so yeah, that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you found it useful. Uh, if you do, please don't forget to click thumbs up, click like, because then I know what, what works and what doesn't. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos about freelancing, freelance translation, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.